the objectives of tonight's webinar, Create a Club Success Plan That Works, by the end of tonight's webinar, we will understand why planning is important to your club's success, how to complete the club success plan document, and understand why frequent review of your club's success plan is important throughout the year. First, let's cover why planning is important. And I'm going to open the floor up for five minutes of discussion for us to talk about why planning is important, whether it be the club success plan or any plan. If you want to contribute to the discussion, mute yourself temporarily using the space bar. It's hard for me to see everyone because I'm sharing my screen. So I ask that you identify yourself or you can use chat to type in your discussion points that way. So let's go ahead and get started on our five minute discussion on why planning is important. This is Julie. <laughs> And it's, uh, it's important because it gives us a goal, it gives us a target to progress professionally in Toastmasters. So professional progress in Toastmasters. I, I certainly agree with that, Julie. Is you have to have a plan to know where you're going. So. Oh, Eldred, in the chat box from Emily Myers. Emily. We have, let's see that just moved. They're coming in fast and furious. <laughs> well, first we have Serena, accountability. Now, Emily, keeping sight of your goals. From Brenda Barati, goal setting with timelines and metrics helps you achieve them. That it does. Zen Zaneda Johnson, it provides a roadmap on how to achieve a goal from that Teresa Yang keeps the executive team on the same page. Karen Sempervivo, without a plan, you will go nowhere fast. <laughs> and Zaneda Johnson, it provides a roadmap on how to achieve a goal. Do you want more? There's lots of them here. And I got a private chat from Christine Seed saying that failure to plan is planning to fail. That's actually a point that I'm going to make pretty soon. The whole idea that failure to plan is a plan to fail. I think we've had quite a few discussion, discussion points, so I thank you all for contributing to our discussion tonight. Anyone else want to speak before I move on? Do those chat comments appear on the recording? Yes, they do. Thank you. Let's go ahead and, and move on. Excellent points, everyone, on why planning is important. As Christine said, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. I've also heard it said this way in a crustier version than is appropriate. For I'll give you the cleaned up version that I heard many times in my Marine Corps training, poor prior planning produces poor performance. Or you could twist that around to make it more positive. Proper prior planning produces proper performance. Either way, I wouldn't recommend saying that three times fast. Some things that planning helps you do and why I consider it important. Planning helps you articulate your values. When you draft a plan, you give yourself the opportunity to set priorities, to determine what is most important for you. And when you determine what is most important, you also give yourself the strength to say no to what is not important. And you're more likely to be passionate about what you include in your plan. A plan is also useful for time management. They're actually very closely related. When you plan what needs to be done, what goals are to be achieved, you can also plan how much time you're willing to spend 
on completing your goals. An example from my recent experience presenting area and division director training. I, on PJ's advice as our district director, set up a much more detailed list. What PJ recommended was I produce, create a list for myself, just a basic timeline of when I plan to be where in my training session so that I could see whether I'm ahead of schedule and can slow down a little bit, or maybe I'm behind schedule and need to speed up. I produced a much more detailed plan than PJ anticipated, but it worked for me. I recognized the Friday night that I presented this training the first time, I had fallen far behind my schedule and my plan told me I was quite a bit behind schedule and I needed to speed up to get to the end. The next day on the feedback that I gave myself from my plan, I recognized I need to tighten this up quite a bit. I did tighten it up the second time, much more rapid flow in my training session. I got a lot more out and still had time to cover one point in greater detail than I had originally planned. And that's one thing that the plan did for me was it helped me manage my time. It helped me recognize how I wasn't quite managing my time well and gave me an opportunity to recognize how I could improve. A map or a plan also presents a map for where you're going, how you're going to get there, and when you plan to be there. A plan gives you strategies. You can use your plan to determine strategies for how you're going to reach your goals. It's more than just what goals you are going to achieve, but how are you going to get there? And that's where strategies come in. And a well-developed plan will give you benchmarks for mid-course correction. You can use your plan to identify how you're veering off course and how you can correct yourself to get yourself back on course. Or maybe you need to change the course midstream. I will get to that a little bit later when we talk about why review is important. Plans are important for team development. For instance, in drafting your club success plan, if you're the club president, you probably want to involve all of your club officers and even all of your club members in the planning process to help when you're working together as a team to develop a team plan, you can discuss such matters as communication styles, how each individual communicates and how best to get information to your teammates or how they can communicate with you. It also gets your team on the same page as far as team goals and what your team wants to accomplish. Planning is important for risk management. In developing a plan, you can identify in advance what risks you're likely to face. You can determine in advance how you're going to address those risks, how you're going to mitigate those risks when you anticipate them. And prepare how you're going to respond to situations when you can anticipate some situations arising, you can plan for that. And you can plan how to respond. Maybe the situation never happens. If it's a bad situation, hopefully it never does happen, but it could. And having a plan in mind will help you understand how you plan to respond. And plans guide decisions. They're like roadmaps. 
it's possible to travel without one, but you increase your chances of getting lost along the way. Our district director, PJ Kleffner, once said a couple of weeks ago, if you don't know where you're going, how will you know when you arrive? An example, on a recent road trip, I used my Google Maps navigator instead of a map to guide me to where I wanted to go on a, to the bottom of a scenic cliff near Lakeview. The navigator ended up taking me to the top of the cliff, not where I wanted to go. Having a map, I didn't have a map. So I did the best I could with the navigator. If I had a map, I probably would have gone to the right place and been there when I wanted to be. So that's an example of how having a, a map and having a plan to use the map could have really helped me out. Now we've talked about why planning is important. Let's take a look at the club success plan to see what you can do with it and how to fill it out. First, I'm going to demonstrate for you where the club success plan can be downloaded. The, the club success plan is a PDF document. I'll show you very briefly what this document looks like so that you can see it. This PDF that I'm showing you right now is a club success plan. I will walk you through this in more detail in just a minute, but I want to show you how you can download this from Toastmasters International. Now let me share this. I have now up the Toastmasters International website and you don't need to log in to download the club success plan from here. So let's type in club success plan in the search box and click search. And at the top of the list, we have the club success plan that you can download to your computer. So let's go ahead and download this. And there it's downloaded. And then you can save this to your computer. I will show you that, I'll go ahead and show you this. This is the club success plan document that I just downloaded from Toastmasters International. Some general tips on how to be successful filling this out. Take your time. A good, well-developed plan does not need to be rushed. Use the plan to articulate your vision. And there are some fields that will help you do that as an individual and as a club officer team. Involve everyone in the planning, everyone on your club officer team and everyone in your club. And focus on, in addition to end goals, focus on the process of how you're going to get there. So now I have up the club success plan. Let's take a look, a brief walkthrough of the plan to see how you can fill it out. The first couple of pages are useful for chartering your team, how your team of club officers is composed, who's on your team, and that's what the team composition field is for. Here you can identify who the officers on your club officer team are and core values. Toastmasters has as its core values, integrity, respect, service, and excellence. I recommend that as an excellent starting point for your club, but you don't have to stop there. For instance, my Sunday afternoon club, the Babylon Toastmasters Club, on the advice of our past international president, Gary Schmidt, we developed a second mission statement in addition to the Toastmasters International Club mission statement that identifies unique aspects of our club's culture. For instance, diversity and fun and team-centered environment. 
And we repeat this second club mission statement every Sunday in addition to the international club mission statement. So this can also be wrapped up in your team's core values, your club's core values. Team operating principles. What are the principles that will guide your team's interaction with each other and how you function together as a club officer team? There are some fields here for situation analysis. What potential obstacles do you anticipate your club possibly facing? What protocol will guide your club officer team meetings? How will decisions be made as a club officer team? How will you communicate with each other? There are a lot of other fields here that I'm not going to go through every one of them in detail. The instructions on the club success plan document, I think are pretty clear and will help you will help guide your team's efforts to draft a club success plan. But I just wanted to show these fields to show you that there's more to a well done club success plan than simply identifying your club's goals. This first three pages allows you the opportunity to determine and plan some of the process, but that some of the process that will guide your club working together. Now, let's take a look at the goals, the pages on this success plan that help you as a club set goals for yourselves. First, membership, the membership requirement of the Distinguished Club Program. A little bit of a situation analysis here. What is your club's membership as of July 1st? This will tell you whether you need to finish the year with 20 members or a net growth of five, new, five more members at the end of the year than you started with. So this is really important because this will help you identify what you need to do to meet the membership requirement for distinguished club recognition. And education goals. We have several pages committed to education goals. Good news is that this club success plan document has been updated for pathways and no, it does not show any of the traditional educational awards anymore. So this is totally pathways compliant. So this field that I'm identifying right now, how many of the 10 goals in the distinguished club program does your club aim to achieve? And then that identifies each of the 10 goals, first six being education goals. This is something that if you're the VP of education, I encourage you to talk with the members of your club, speak with them, help them set goals for themselves and identify what their personal, professional and educational goals are. This is really good for the situation analysis. In fact, every section on this club success plan has a situation analysis where you can identify where your club is, where your club is coming from, what has worked for your club, what has not worked. And this gives you an idea of how to move forward. Education action plan. What does your club plan to do to achieve its education goals? Who plans to do what? And how are you going to help them? How will the goals be completed? How will you track progress towards your goals. Who is responsible for helping your club members achieve their goals? A lot of different questions that by completing this club success plan with your club officer team, you can address these questions well in advance and give yourself a roadmap and a timeline for achieving your club goals. We have membership goals, seven and eight. How do you plan to work together as a club officer team to 
market Toastmasters to the community and sign up for new members. And after signing up for new members to meet goal seven, how do you plan to meet goal eight by signing up another four new members? And again, situation analysis, what is the current membership situation? What obstacles do you anticipate? And then an action plan, strategies for how you're going to reach your membership growth goals. Who can help? What equipment do you have available to you? What committees can you put into place to achieve your goals? And then assignments, who is responsible? What is that person going to be responsible to do? How will progress be tracked? When will the goal be accomplished? You know, there's training, the training goal on the Distinguished Club Program, goal number nine. This is a matter of getting club officers trained at least four in the summer and at least four again in the winter. How do you plan to do this? Work together with your club officer team to determine who is going to attend training. Ideally, all seven club officers will attend training in the summer and all seven will receive training in the winter. Don't think of it in terms of meeting the minimum. Go for the maximum, get everyone trained. But again, the situation analysis, what is this current situation? What obstacles do you see yourself facing? Action plan, what strategies, what are you going to do to reach your goal? This one should probably be easy. Send seven club officers to TLI in the summer. Send seven club officers again to TLI in the winter. And that way you've met the goal of the training goal. And goal 10 is also in the club success plan, the administration goal, on-time payment of member dues in September and in March. On-time submission of your club officer list to world headquarters in June. How are you going to do that? Who is responsible for helping you for getting this done? Probably the secretary, but this is an opportunity for you as a club officer team to determine how you're going to get the membership dues paid and how you're going to get the club officer list in on time. So it, it involves more than just the secretary. And then the last few pages of the club success plan this is where you get sign, sign off from all of the club officers on your team. It's important to work on this together as a team. And when you complete this together as a team, have all of the members of your club officer team sign this document. And that shows that you've done your work to get the buy-in of every member of your club officer team. But there are also some signature fields for other members of your team who are members of your club who are not members of the club officer team. Have at least everyone on your club officer team sign and date. Now, if you choose to keep this as an electronic document, it's okay to type your name into the signature field so that you don't have to print this out and sign it, but you can do that also if you want. Either way works. And a couple of pages reminding you of what the goals of the Distinguished Club Program are and what resources are available to you as a club and a club officer team to help you achieve your goals. And a field for just taking random notes at the end. This is a complete walkthrough of the club success plan. Again, if you have any questions about specific fields on this plan or how to complete this plan, please type those questions into chat and we will address them after the end of my presentation tonight. The third objective 
in our webinar tonight, why you should review your plan frequently throughout the year. And I'm going to open the floor again for discussion. So please, over the next five minutes, let's discuss why review of your plan throughout the year is important. Again, feel free to type your responses into chat, or if you want, hold down the space bar, speak, please identify yourself, and we will discuss why review of your plan is important. We've got a couple here to keep you on track with your goals to make sure everyone's on the same page. And because situations change, there's one reviewing your plan helps you check, helps you to check what you have achieved from that plan and the items that still need your attention. Way to identify if the club is on track or not. You may also take advantage of new situations. Helps to adjust the original plan to account for changes or new challenges. Motivation and accountability. There's a great one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and here's a great one from Karen Semper Vivo. If you just write it up once, then put it away, becomes an artifact instead of a real living document for planning for your club. And here's one from Julie Karstensen. Gives a reason to celebrate success. Party. I like that one. <laughs> it is important to celebrate achievement whenever you can. Let's see. Getting the officers to fill this all out will be a challenge. Mm. Question here. How can we break yeah. it apart so it's not overwhelming? You could spend, break it up a chunk a week for two to three weeks, if that works better. Kind of like we break up our online Zoom training. Yeah, in my club too, you can have, um, well, for instance, on the education piece, you could have the vice president of education, maybe another member or two to get on a little Zoom meeting or just on the phone and talk about how, um, how you're gonna address those specific issues, make those plans, and one person can record it. Mm -hmm. Share the workload. And this is PJ, I have a suggestion. Just like we do, we're working on the district success plan right now, and I did part of it. Eldred is the program quality director is doing part of it, and Lori, is doing part for the club growth director. So mm -hmm. split it up depending on your area of responsibility as a club officer. Yeah. And Julie, could there be a simplified version? Is that a question? Mm -hmm. Okay, so yes. I think, yeah, last year we had Maybe PJ could speak to this because we did have a simplified version of the club success plan that we used in one of our incentives. Is that correct, PJ? Yes, it was actually just a summary of how the club was going to meet the distinguished club program goals, the 10 goals. So it was a one sheet that had goal number one, and then you were supposed to fill in the names of the people who are going to meet that goal, <clears throat> excuse me, in this case, goal number one is to complete four level ones in pathways. So you list the names of the four club members who commit to meeting pathways level one during the year. And then goal number two is to complete two level twos. So you ask who's going to complete two level twos and you put their name on those. So you have a one page summary of meeting the 10 goals. Okay. I guess that does it. And then, um, of course, the, the last two goals, as you mentioned, were the administrative goals, getting your club officers trained and submitting your dues on time. 
just make a note on there when you submit your dues, record the date and check that one off. Yeah. So it, it's just a summary page. Of, is, is at a glance, you can see the entire page or the entire oh. plan. Oh, thanks, PJ. Excellent discussion points, every one of you. So some tips on why I think review of your plan is important throughout the year. Accountability. For instance, you can say, I would recommend saying this to yourself and maybe using a more tactful version when communicating with somebody else. Uh, remember when you said you'd earn a level four by December 31st? Well, it's December 24th. Where are you in your work toward that goal? There's an example of accountability. And we mentioned how review of your plan can also help with course correction. You rarely ever drive your car at a perfectly straight line at a perfectly constant speed. Driving is actually a practice of constantly making minor course corrections. Speed up, slow down, turn the steering wheel to the left or right, turn it to the left. Avoid the rumble strip on the shoulder and for heaven's sake, don't veer into the oncoming lane. It's by constantly making micro adjustments like this that you keep on course. Review of your plan helps you adapt to unforeseen events. Unforeseen events, well, we are dealing with one right now with COVID-19, but that is an unforeseen event that I don't know that anyone could have really foreseen at this severity. But there are other much less severe events that you may not anticipate. For instance, you may have a member of your club who has committed to earning a DTM award for the year, but that member, his work has forced him to relocate to somewhere else in the country. Imagine a scenario where we're still meeting in person, we're not meeting it via Zoom, so this person had no opportunity to continue meeting with your club in person. And you've lost that person's goals. How are you going to adapt to that unforeseen circumstance? I know from a recent road trip that I didn't foresee getting lost, but well, it happened. I got lost. How was I going to adapt? I needed to take a time out to look at my map, determine where I was, where I needed to be, and then replot my course to get me to my destination, even if my destination was just a big hole in the ground. Review of your plan also gives you feedback, as I'd mentioned before with my example from division director training. You get feedback from your review on what is working, what isn't working. Review of your plan can help you make more rapid decisions when necessary. And plans can be modified mid-course to accommodate unforeseen circumstances. A good club success plan will already have pre-made decisions when you recognize a situation where you've already decided how you're going to respond because it's what you anticipated would happen, you've already made your decision how you're going to respond. You can then review your plan and decide, are we going to respond the way we said we would? Or does this require a different response? Maybe we need to rethink our response, but that's something you can determine in your review of your plan. And you might find in your review assumptions that you made that need to be adjusted. And a review of your plan can also help you save time. Maybe you recognize that you could be doing things more efficiently. And reviewing your plan helps you identify what you could be doing more efficiently so that you can save time. 
when should you review your plan? I recommend at least on a regular interval. As often as your club officer team meets, you can use every club officer meeting as an opportunity to review your plan. Make some minor adjustments based on what happened the previous month or the previous quarter, how often, however often your club officer team meets. And after major events that force you to rethink where you're headed, for instance, the COVID-19 was an excellent opportunity when we knew that we were going to have to either move our meetings to Zoom or not meet at all. That gave us an opportunity, would have been a very good time to review your plan again and make changes as necessary to accommodate moving meetings online. One thing I do recommend, I do recommend that you be careful not to get so involved in planning and revising your plan that you fail to actually execute your plans. The problem of paralysis by analysis is a real problem. And if you spend too much time in a planning process, you won't get anything done. So a plan is simply a plan for how you're going to do the elements of the plan. I am going to announce after we have fielded questions and answers some incentives that we have in place specifically regarding the club success plan. So I'm not going to address this slide right here. I am going to review for you, however, the objectives that we covered tonight. In tonight's webinar, we covered the three objectives of why planning is important, how to complete the club success plan, and why review of that plan throughout the year is important. I hope you got a lot out of this presentation and that this will help you draft your club success plan over the next couple of months to give you the roadmap that your club needs to be successful on the Distinguished Club Program and at achieving all of your club and member goals. Thank you for attending tonight and I will turn our webinar back over to Leanna.